Rub up your engines! Now here's something you might not think was possible with the Civic, okay? He moved from California to Brooklyn and he got a U-Haul trailer and he pulled it with this Honda that has a CVT transmission. Now he did get 18 miles a gallon pulling the trailer at high speeds and he got 22 miles a gallon going 55 miles an hour, but who in their right mind could drive all the way from California to Brooklyn going 55 miles an hour? <laughs> That's not a feasible thing. You would probably go insane. But he made it. The CVT transmission didn't have any problems. It was able to pull it. Hondas are over-engineered. Anybody who knows cars knows that Hondas are pretty well engineered. Now, when he's not towing trailers with it, he'll get, you know, 32, 34 miles a gallon on the thing. So you always lose a lot of gas bodge when you pull things. That's just the way that it goes. But I mean, still at 18 miles a gallon, he was still able to go long enough on his trips that he'd go from a long gas station to another one far away. It wasn't like, it was an electric car that he'd have to plug in and wait forever. It's a regular gasoline car. And he even bought this thing used. He bought one that had 34,000 miles on it. So he's not even the original owner. It just shows you that Honda pretty much knows what they're doing. So let's look under the hood. We have the Earth Dream technology. It is a two liter non-turbocharged engine. Now, a lot of people are worried about these Earth Dream engines. Oh, they have oil dilution problems, blah, blah, blah. He doesn't have that problem, especially because this is a two liter non-turbo. The turbo with GDI, some of them had problems. The new ones don't, and that new GF6 oil pretty much gets rid of the problem in the first place. But it's a two liter engine that, in a small car like this, obviously has enough power. He pulled a U-Haul trailer with all the stuff from California to Brooklyn. It just went down to 18 miles a gallon because it was pulling all that heavy weight. And it is a CVT transmission, of course. It's Hondas, they make their own, and their engineers have a pretty good idea what they're doing. Now, a lot of people complain that they're underpowered, but I mean, hey, this is an economy car with a CVT transmission. If you remember a couple weeks ago, I did a video on the Honda small SUV had the same engine. And the guy loved the car, but he said, ah, oh, it's underpowered. Well, it weighs more than this. When he wrote to this, I'm sure it's gonna be zippier than the SUV was. But on the other hand though, if he had gotten standard transmission, this thing would be a screamer. <laughs> CVT transmissions are not made for racing. They're made for economy and gas mileage which is what he gets when he's not pulling stuff. But he went the whole way from California to Brooklyn, all the way, mountains and stuff, didn't have any problems. It worked perfectly fine. You say, the Honda engineers know what they're doing. Now all he's done is change the oil filter and he just changed the battery. Well, that's typical. As you can see, see these tiny little Honda batteries? Why are they tiny? Tiny because Honda wants to save money when they build their cars. The bigger a battery, the better it is. But unfortunately on these, there isn't much room to put a bigger battery in. What I always did with my Toyotas was when the original battery would go out, I'd go and buy the biggest battery I could fit in the car, and then it would last the longest and have no problems. But these, unfortunately, are pretty well stuck with that size battery. It lasted quite a few years, but it's just kind of would make me a little bit on the mad side if I bought one and you got a battery that's just too small. And the only reason they do it is because it's cheaper to make. The bigger the battery, the more power you're gonna have, the less hassles you're gonna have. And really, a big battery versus a small battery, yeah, maybe it weighs three, four, five pounds more. Does that really matter? You're getting in the car, you weigh, you know, 150, 200 pounds, you got other people. A little bit of weight like that is immaterial to gas mods, if you ask me. 40,000 miles, he serviced the transmission. They're so easy to service on. Just got a drain hole, and then you take it off, drain it out, measure how much come in, put that much back in. It's so easy to do. Watch some of my videos, I'll show you how to do it. You do that, I always use the Honda fluid, because Hondas are very particular, especially CVTs, but he did, and he had no problems going from California to Brooklyn. Now here's a new toy I just got, it's an Autel, and some Axisys Ultra. Now if it does one-tenth of the things they claim it does, it's gonna blow me away, so we're gonna hook it up and check things out. Well, like any scan tool, it just plugs in, and we'll turn on a key, turn on a computer, diagnostics, and we'll do Auto VIN, VIN, USA Civic 2016. We'll do a scan here, there we go, it's scanning through it. Okay, everything's good, except it's got one code, and that is for the ABS, so let's check it out. Okay, it's got a code that the electronic parking brake control unit internal circuit has a malfunction. I just put it neutral and pulled it on so it works. So much for circuit malfunction, and that's the problem with all these 
stupid computer stuff. We'll erase this code anyways. But at some point in time, it showed I had a circuit fault in the electronic parking brake. Now, I have seen this before. He recently changed the battery. A lot of times when the old battery's worn out, you gotta use a parking brake, right? But the battery's worn it out, and it'll get a code for a circuit malfunction in the parking brake, because it didn't get enough electricity. Now, what I tell people to do is, you find a guy like me, after you change your battery, hook up a machine like this and erase all the codes because otherwise the guy the other day had like five codes and it was all because he had changed the battery and nobody reset it. Cars are so complex today, you really gotta reset everything when you change the battery. See, you got a bunch of active tests we could do if there was something wrong. And they also have a bunch of special functions to do the TPMS system. But let's look at live data. We'll start it up. Quite a bit of live data here. We'll start to do it, but just for kicks. Watch this. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. See all this data? Look at all this data. It's still going. Now, this data is just for the ABS system. Now we'll go into engine data. Go into engine powertrain, and we're going to look at live data. Now, this is going to blow your mind here. Here we go. Now, watch the amount of data that we're going to have. We're still in the A's. Da, 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 da. We're still going, people. Yes, we are. You can see it's on, no misfires, of course. We're in the D's now. Well, we're back to the C's. <laughs> Look at all that data. It's absolutely insane. And of course, it's on, just so the data is all fine. Check it out. You can even get the battery consumption history on one of these things. As you can see here, you can test the EVAP system, the VTEC, bi directional testing, radiator fan, fuel pump. Injectors, one injector stop, variable cylinder shut off, cylinder cranking speed, cylinder air fuel test. There are so much things this can do. The automatic stop start system. You can't on this because it doesn't have one. <laughs> it knows that too. EGR system, high voltage battery. Of course, this doesn't have a high voltage battery, so it's not going to do anything. You're able to do all these different things. It's absolutely insane. Now, the car's perfectly fine, but this. Scan tool, let me tell you, I could spend 100 years going through all the stuff you could do with it. It is insane what the modern technology is on these cars. It's absolutely insane. You can check all the control modules, go through the CAN system. It is nuts what this machine can do. Now, you're not going to go out and buy one unless you're a mechanic. They're expensive machines, but I have been testing out scan tools for many, many years. And as far as I'm concerned, this is the one that's the closest to the only scan tool that you'd need. None of them are absolutely perfect. There'll always be something they don't have. But for all the cars that it covers, I got to say, it's pretty impressive. I can't even show you the data on the different CAN systems. This is the CAN H6. We'll switch it to the CAN L14. It's absolutely insane what this thing can do. Now this particular section is to check through all the CAN bus. See if you got a communication problem. It also has an oscilloscope so you can pinpoint individual ones, plain old multimeter, and even a waveform generator. So if you think that a sensor's bad, you can generate a waveform, watch the sensor with this device, and see if it's activating or not. Yes, cars are getting that complex. It's a shame smart guys like me aren't getting into auto repair much anymore because the future for getting your car repaired correctly is getting bleak out there. <laughs> we'll turn the parking brake off now. I do have to say, it is an awful tiny backup camera. <laughs> but hey, it's a tiny car, right? You can still see. Now we're on the bumpy roads of Rhode Island. And hey, for a little car, it's riding over the bumps pretty good. You got a short wheelbase. There's only so much you can do with a short wheelbase. I mean, let's face the facts. You know? But it's still, it rides quite smooth. Nice, small steering wheel, black and chrome. It's got reasonable amount of features to it on the steering wheel. We'll see what the CVT transmission can do. We'll look for the traffic and nobody's coming to the left. Nobody's coming to the right, so here we go. Now it doesn't shift gears because it's a CVT transmission, but it's got plenty of pickup. It's a lot faster than the SUV that had the two liter Honda engine in. I tried out a couple weeks ago. It's not bad. I mean, it gets you where you're going, and it's not like it's a complete turtle, but I just don't like the CVTs. You know, it's going to handle like a dream. You can zip all over the place with this thing. Park it anywhere. It's small enough. Freezing cold AC. So there you have it. A used Honda Civic with a CVT transmission that went across the country pulling the U-Haul. Yes, it did get 18 miles a gallon in, but it made it. There's no adverse effects you saw. There's no transmission codes, no engine codes. 
The only code that he had was probably because he changed the battery. It was about the stupid parking brake, which worked perfectly fine. It probably had too low of a voltage and it tripped that code, and then we got rid of it, didn't come back. So, hey, who would think you're going to be pulling a big U-Haul with a little bit of Honda Civic? And it's just a base model, two-liter, non-turbocharged. It made it. No adverse effects. Engine runs fine, doesn't burn oil. Hey, everybody knows these things are well made, and there's proof of it. I've never known anybody to actually pull a trailer. The transmission, the CVT worked fine, the engine worked fine. You'll just get crappy gas mileage for a Honda <laughs> when you're towing something that big. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.